The scene in Twin Peaks The Return, where Mr. C talks to Philip Jeffries, is a crucial encounter that strongly invites decoding. But it contains a major clue that most people seem to have missed. While our visual attention is drawn to the well-lit area of steam, a faint image flickers in and out of the lower right-hand corner, along with certain lines of dialogue. An image of a radiator. Is it a callback to Eraserhead? There are other examples of shared imagery between Eraserhead and Twin Peaks, the lodge-style floor pattern in Henry's foyer, and the arm on his bedside table, but especially the fact that the very same image of an atomic explosion is on the wall of both Henry's bedroom and Cole's office. Thanks to episode 8, it is obvious that the Trinity explosion of July 1945 is a crucial fulcrum of the symbolism of Twin Peaks The Return. But there's a handful of details surrounding the lady in the radiator, which suggests that it is similarly important to Eraserhead. First is that word radiator, invoking atomic radiation. The music she does her bug-stomping dance to is Stompin' the Bug by Fats Waller, which was recorded at a church named Trinity. This theme could explain her very weird cheeks. Doesn't she kind of look like a mushroom cloud? And when Henry touches her, there is a blinding white light accompanied by sounds of intense wind, distinctly similar to an atomic blast. What is this? How I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb? It turns out that the picture on Henry and Gordon's walls is not of the Trinity test. It is from a much later series of tests known as Operation Plum Bob. So there's the Bob connection to Eraserhead. And perhaps a connection to that other pop culture, Bob, beloved by surrealist weirdos in the early 90s, since the image was taken on July 5th, or X-Day. So... If the lady in the radiator is a reference to the atomic bomb, then what does that mean for the Jeffries scene? Well, thanks to J.R. Bob Oppenheimer, the Trinity test is associated with the Bhagavad Gita. He famously quoted his own translation of Shiva's line, Now I am become death, destroyer of worlds. The man who birthed the bomb was a devoted student of the Gita, calling it the most beautiful philosophical song existing in any known tongue. Another big fan of the Bhagavad Gita is David Lynch, who has been known to quote it in lectures and tweets and in his book Catching the Big Fish. Lynch is not known as a Hindu, but he is clearly attracted to the associated mythos and is a lifelong devotee of Vedic-style meditation. With that in mind, isn't it curious that the Jeffrey's device closely resembles a lingam? It's a short pillar with a curved top, and a kind of a spout, and they both have the elements of the tripundra. Three lines and a dot. That's quite a few details, not easy to dismiss as coincidence. But there's more. If the Jeffries device is a lingam, then we can interpret the recurring low hum as a kind of electro-industrial ohm. Who is Judy? Is Judy the lady in the radiator? Is Judy the spirit of the bomb? I don't know, but what about the other guy in this scene? Is it just me, or is Mr. C rocking a kind of a Shiva vibe? There's the similar hairstyle, the fact that he's a destroyer, the fact that he's a destroyer of evil, a destroyer of bad people, not a villain. How about the fact that he says, the cow jumped over the moon for no apparent reason? The cow jumped over the moon. When Shiva is often depicted riding a bull with the moon on his head. Fits pretty well. And it nicely fills out this intriguing new subtext through which to review this famous scene. In any case, the atomic bomb is more central to the symbolism of Eraserhead than has previously been recognized. And who knows? Maybe it would be fruitful to search for Vedic overtones to other aspects of the return.